My name is Bernadette Gerby, and we are at Gerby Glass, which is a glass studio in Lawrenceville, in the Lawrenceville neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. summer of 2013. I chose Lawrenceville as a place to open the shop because uh, previously we've been living in the suburbs, raised our kids in the suburbs, which was great for them. But when we became empty nesters, we wanted more of a community feel, more of a neighborhood. Uh, so we were, we always joked that we were going to retire to New York City, uh, but we can't afford it. <laughs> So we're like, okay, where in Pittsburgh can we get that same cool urban vibe? And I didn't even know about Lawrenceville, uh, but my son told me about it. So I came down and checked it out. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's where we want to move to. And I had no intention of opening a shop at that point. I, I had been melting glass, but um, I didn't intend to open a shop. And I came down here driving around looking at properties, and I saw a storefront for sale texted a picture of it to my husband and said, ha ha, we should buy a storefront. Well, that's all there was. And he got on that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we're we'll buying a storefront. Um, so we bought the building, renovated the whole thing, and moved it down here. What's, uh, so I live behind the studio. And what's great about this neighborhood is that it is such a community feel. It's really artsy, uh, really fun kind of a destination. Well, as a matter of fact, this this was the only we wanted. We knew we wanted a storefront. We knew we wanted uh, to be on Butler Street, um, and this was the only one that was for sale at the time. Um, it did, and so we really lucked into the spot. But I love the spot we're right in the center of everything. Yeah, right there. Right. Yeah. Beerport next door is great. Grown House Cinema next door. Yeah, we really were fortunate with the spot. So I started uh, Melting Glass because I became an empty nester. I had three kids in three and a half years. I was a stay at home mom, so I went from being really, really busy to really, really not because they all grew up and moved on, which is the goal. <laughs> But for some reason, my 20-somethings didn't want to be the major focus in my world. Weird. Um, so I, I was talking to my husband. I'm like, I need a project. And he says, well, take a class. Take a glass class or a ceramics class or a cooking class. So I did all of those. So I don't do things a little bit. Um, and I don't do ceramics work very much anymore. So I started this and absolutely fell in love with the Where did you take your first class? My first couple of workshops I took at Pittsburgh Glass Center in East Liberty. Um, and very, very shortly after that, I had one equipment set up in my garage where we used to live. Um, and since then, I've taken classes all over the country. Pittsburgh is a huge hotbed for glass. Uh, not only art glass, but, but like uh, what you would call it, like industrial glass. I mean, PPG is huge here, oh, you know, glass. it's for Blake Glass. What's, what's that stand for? Anyways, yeah, glass has always been really big here. And then Pittsburgh Glass Center opened, I think, probably 15 years ago or so, um, which really makes it available to the community to, to try out, to learn a little bit. I started by taking a couple of workshops at Pittsburgh Glass Center. Um, and then since then, I've taken classes all over the country. I'm still taking classes. I, I'm scheduled to take one in Corning this summer. Hopefully, if I get in, there's a lottery system. Um, but there's there's so much to learn, and even you know, people. Some people are self-taught, but um, I think that that is challenging because 
you know, once you get into bad habits, it's hard to break them. It's hard to say what the part of glass that I like the least is because I really enjoy almost all of it. Um, I would say probably marketing would be my least favorite. Um, yeah, I'm really, really fortunate because I do have a brick and mortar store where I sell my work and I can be melting while people come in to see my work and potentially buy it. Um, most people don't have a setup like this. I, I appreciate how much I am fortunate uh, to have this. There's a lot of different types of glass and glass art. Uh, what most people think of when they think of glass blowing is furnace glass, where there's a big vat of molten glass and you go a big long pole. Yeah, that's what you Yeah, that's what most people think of. And I have tried that. Um, <clears throat> but it, it wasn't for me. One, it's extremely physical. It's like really big stuff. Um, and two, it's more difficult to set up your own studio. Mm -hmm. And three, you can't work alone. And while I am a social person, I don't want to have to rely on someone else to develop it to play. And I really consider working with class play. This is just fun. glass industry thriving. Uh, I think in some ways it is, in some ways it's not. There's a lot of people getting into it with the legalization of cannabis that's going around. There's a lot of people that are getting into it specifically to make pipes, to make, you know, paraphernalia, rigs um, and stuff. But, but they bring a whole nother aspect to the art. I mean, they're not just pieces to smoke weed with. They're, they're really beautiful art pieces yeah. um, themselves. So, so in that way, you know, a lot of more people are getting into it. Um, it's not an easy life. I mean, I, you know, I'm fortunate that I have this storefront. I'm also fortunate that I'm not trying to support a family on what I make selling glass, because yeah. uh, that would be a whole different story. So, so who's the, the Michael Jordan of glass blowing? Um, that's, that's a really hard question to answer. Um, but in my opinion, this isn't necessarily who's the most famous because, yeah. um, you know, Chihuly is the name that comes to everyone's mind. And uh, what Chihuly did really well is market himself. <laughs> So yeah, not necessarily hard. that he's the best glass blower around, but he's the most known. Uh, that being said, who's the best glass blower as far as I'm concerned? Uh, it's a couple of names that you've probably never heard of. Um, both friends of mine. Uh, one was pretty much my first intensive glass teacher. Uh, and that is a guy named Tim Dreyer. Tim and his brother started melting glass when they were like 10 years old. Their father bought a little chemistry set. And uh, Tim and his brother are both scientific glass blowers. Uh, Tim's worked for Dow Chemical in Michigan for the last 100 years, Tim, right? <laughs> um, and he knows so much about glass and how it works and you know he scientific glass is means that they work with scientists and the scientists need a specific kind of apparatus to test their theory on blah 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 and if they can't, can't order it out of a catalog then they go to Tim Tim listens to them and then he creates whatever it is that they said they want and he is an amazing glass blower and a super nice guy and uh, I consider him a dear friend. Um, the other one 
who I think knows everything there is to know about glass, um, is a real beautiful person. He's he's a quiet, unassuming, but man, can he crank out the glass. And he knows everything that he's talking about. And his name is Matt Tyner, and he's out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, just the super nicest guy you could ever meet. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, Tim and Matt are my children.